All right, we've now got a way to process our data files, but we keep having to change the name of the data file in the program itself, and that's annoying. So let's see if we can fix that. Let's run a Python interpreter. I'm going to begin by importing the math library. Import is a keyword in Python. It means go and get this other piece of code and bring it into this program so that I can use it. Here, we're importing the standard math library. It has values like math.py, library name dot name of thing in library. And we use this notation because it's possible, though not likely, that some other library will also have defined a value for pi. Okay, you might think that wouldn't happen, but math.sign is a function, but if I'm importing some theology library, theology.sin is likely to be a very different thing. I need a way to say exactly what I'm referring to, and the standard way is to say, here's the thing I imported, and here's the component of that thing. Just as when I say line.strip, I'm saying go and get the strip method from this particular thing, in this case a string, because other things might have other ways to strip themselves, center themselves, convert themselves to upper or lower case, and so forth. This is your first taste of object-oriented programming, and it's about as far as we'll go in this class. But the idea that things contain other things and know how to do things is probably the most powerful idea when it comes to structuring large programs. We'll see it again in a little while. All right, what is math dot sign of 1.0. Okay, what is math.sign of math.py? Almost zero. 1.22 by 10 to the minus 16. What is math.sign of zero? It's zero. Math.sign of math.py over two is exactly one. Okay, so math.sign of math.py should be exactly zero. But whatever they're using to calculate that value, obviously they don't have a lookup table, is giving me something that's very close but not exactly zero. But I do get exactly the right answer for pi over 2 and for 0. Okay, I'm willing to believe that the sine function is correct. There are lots and lots of other libraries in Python that you can use. And in fact, knowing the libraries is as important as knowing the language. The one that we're going to use right now is called the sys library, short for system. Sys.version is a string that tells me what version of Python am I using. So if you are printing provenance information, for example, you would print version and sys.version to your output files so that people who are using your code know which version of Python you are running on. Sys.version has, all, or rather the sys library has a lot of other things like what is the biggest integer I can represent on this machine? In this case it's 2 to the 31, minus 1, for reasons that I really am not going to go into. What else has sys got? Well, sys also has a special array called argv. And in order to show you what that is, I'm going to have to write a little program. And I'll call this program arguments.py. Show the command line arguments. I'm going to import the sys library and then print sys.argv is, and I'm going to print that special list, sys.argv. Now, sys is a library, so I'm loading the library. Inside sys, there's a thing called argv. It's short for argument values. The name is inherited from C. Sys.argv is just a list. Let's see what happens when I run this program. Python arguments.py. Sys.argv is the list containing only arguments.py. That's the name of my script. Okay, what if I say Python arguments.py some other values? Sys.argv is now arguments.py and then some other and values. Every single one of my command line arguments shows up as an entry in this list, sys.argv. Now, you don't have to do this. When you import the sys library, Python automatically goes and gets the argument values and puts them into sys.argv for you. That magic happens behind the scenes as your program is starting up. 
All you have to do is look inside sys.argv after you've imported the library to find out what was given to your program on the command line. For example, Python, arguments.py, steve2012.txt. Argument zero is the name of my program. I might want to print that out for error messages. Argument one is the name of my data file because that's where it was on the command line. Okay, let's go back in here to our fish counter, import sys, file name is sys.argv of one, and then open that file name. What have I done? Well, I'm loading the system library because that's how I get, among other things, my command line arguments. I'm expecting the program name to be sys.argv0, because it always is, and then the name of the file I'm supposed to process will be sys.argv1. All right, then I'm going to do everything that I was doing for fixed files, but I'm going to do it on the file whose name you give me. Let's see what happens. Python countfish.py list index out of range. Aha, I actually have to give it a file name, don't I? Because otherwise, I'm going to be trying to access element one of sys.argv, which isn't there. Let's try that. Total number of creatures seen, 30. All right, this is looking good. What if I change the file to be, oh, I need another data file. Let's copy data jerry2012 to this directory. Okay, Jerry has one marlin and one shark, so the right answer is two. So Python count fish Jerry. Number of creatures seen is two. All right, this is looking promising. In fact, let's get rid of that temp file. We no longer need it. I could even say for file name in Jerry and Steve do Python countfish.py, dollar file name, and done. We saw loops in the shell earlier. It's now giving me a way to run my Python program over and over again, once for each data file that I want to analyze. All right, that works, but I think there's a better way. Let's go back into Python. We don't actually need the program name. Let's say For file name in sys.argv, remember sys.argv is a list, we know how to loop over lists. All I've done is add a loop. I'm saying for each file name, open that file, and then for each line in the file, do all of the things I was doing before. I've taken something that I tested for one file, and now I'm going to do it for each file that you've given me the name of on the command line. The simplest way to test this is to make sure that it still works for one file. Hmm, what's gone wrong here? That should still work. It should just loop over one file and then do everything I was doing before. Well, the mistake is I'm looping over all of sys.argv. And the very first element of that list, sys.argv, is the name of my program. So I'm actually trying to read the program itself as if it was a data file. Right, let's print that out. Let's just say all file names is sys.argv. And then for file name in, all file names. I am about to process that. So I'm just going to put the things I'm about to process into a variable called all file names. I'll print it out to the screen, just for debugging, and then I will loop over it. I'm about to process countfish.py and jerry2012.txt. Okay, if I'm processing countfish.py and I'm trying to read my Python program as if it was a three column data file, I'm not surprised that something has broken. How can I get everything except the first element? Well, Suppose I've got the string like that. 
Name zero is the capital A. Name one is L. Name two is the A. Name three is N. And name zero to four is ALAN. Start at index zero, go up to but not including index four. So it's the z zero, one, two, three. And I get the word Alan. What about name from two to seven? What about name from two with no end? It starts at index two and goes all the way to the end because I left off the stopping. What about name up to seven? It'll go from zero up to but not including seven. And it's important to remember that it's up to but not including the last index. Right? That's how range works, that's how counting works in Python. You always start at zero, and the only consistent thing to do then is to say, well, if I go from zero up to three, I should get three characters. So I've got to get characters at locations zero, one, and two. It works with lists as well. If I say symbols is hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen, Symbols up to number three gives me hydrogen, helium, and lithium. Symbols from four to the end gives me zero, one, two, three, yep. Boron is four. It's the fifth element. So I get from boron to the end. All right. I don't want sys.argv. I want sys.argv from one to the end of the list because I want to skip element zero, because element zero will always be the name of my program. Now, I'm not expecting you to figure this out. This is an idiom. This is a convention that people have developed that they use over and over again. Every language, human or computer, has idioms. It has certain phrases that are just understood to mean certain things. When you start a letter by saying, Dear John, you might not even know John. John probably isn't dear to you, but the word dear is just how we start letters. Similarly, this notion that sys.argv is all of the command line arguments, including the program name, and therefore you want sys.argv from index one to the end, is just a common pattern that you see over and over again, and you get to the point where you just recognize what it's doing. So let's try this. Python countfish.py with Jerry. Write. Because I'm now selecting sys.argv from one to the end, I'm getting all of the actual file names, not including the program name. So now I'm going to process those. So let's get rid of this comment. Try running this again. Good, that's the right answer. What happens if I run on Steve? I get 30. And what happens if I run on Jerry and Steve? Good, I get the result for Jerry, and then I get the result for Steve, which is what I was after. Inside my program, I've now got a way to do something for each file in turn. But I think this program is still wrong. It's behaving correctly, but it's become too complex. When I look at this program, I see several things going on at once that are all mixed together. I'm looping over files to process each one in turn. I'm looping over lines from those files, breaking them into pieces, selecting out a particular field and adding that in. It's hard for me to keep track by the time I'm down at a line like this of where I am in the program and what it is that I'm doing. Remember 7 plus or minus 2. At this point in the program, in order to correctly understand what I'm doing, I have to keep track of the list of files and the loop over the files, the fact that reader is pointing at an open file, that I've got a total variable which is counting a sum, I've got a line variable which is the next line out of the file, I've done an if statement to throw away various things. I'm pretty quickly hitting my limit of things that I can keep square in my head. I need a way to break this up into pieces, and that's what we'll do in our next episode. Thank you.